Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I'm Dr. Krishnanand and in this session on geomorphology, we are going to learn about the glacial landforms. So right from the concept of glacier to its formation to all those processes operating and various kinds of erosional as well as depositional landforms are going to be discussed in this session. But before we go ahead, do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now in previous session, we learned about the fluvial landforms, that is landforms made by the running water. In this session, we are talking about glacial landforms. So agent of erosion and deposition is here. So in glacial geomorphology as well, we learn about it. So what are the landforms that are created by glacial action? So let's learn about it in the geomorphology, that is the landforms. So first important thing that we need to learn is the formation part of the glacier how a glacier forms. So, first important thing is that it is basically the snowflakes that come out as what we know the precipitation. So, when snowflakes accumulate, it gradually acquires the granular shape. It means all these small flakes of snow that you enjoy in the snowfall. So, this accumulates further and it forms grains. So, when it becomes grain, remember that granular structure is there. And from that granular structure, it further, again, there is a coalescence of all these grains. So, it together further fuses and forms this something called fern. And then, when this fern becomes large with further more deposition, layer after layer, so then there is a thick mass of this ice formed, which is called glacial ice. So, remember, from snowflake, to granular snow, to fern, to glacial ice. This is the entire journey of formation of a glacier. So it's not simply that any kind of hip of snow is called glacier. Remember, there is a difference. A glacier is an entire process of formation that you see here, right? So that is different from any hip or pile of any ice kept anywhere. So that is the difference. So remember, glacier is formed by accumulation of these snowflakes into granular form into ferns and gradually getting bigger shape right and then also triggering some kind of movement it means there is some kind of flow involved in this as well so that is important here if there is no movement it's not considered as just a glacier for a glacier this entire process has to happen this entire component has to be there so this is what is a glacier remember a glacier is not just any casual piece of ice put on any slope it has to have this entire component that we talk about so that is what the entire glacial process is. Now let's learn about several landforms formed due to the movement of this glacier. So when this glacier moves, automatically glacier are found on the higher slopes, right? So mostly above 4000 meters high in India, if we say, and in the world, the average, if you observe, normally the world average would be somewhere 2500 to 3000 meters above sea level. So when you see that glaciers are found on the higher slopes, it means the movement will be there, so gradient will be there and movement in these glaciers would trigger again what? Erosion as well, deposition as well. So several landforms would be formed because of the erosion of these glaciers and deposition of these glaciers. So let's learn about it. So now, masses of ice moving as sheets over the land are called glaciers that we have learned. So what are the types of glaciers? Let's understand. One is the continental glacier or Piedmont glacier that we say. The vast sheet of ice spread over the plains at the foothills of mountains. So this is largely the plain part of glacier. This is not on the slope. This is on the planar part. So even if it is there in the foothills, it is largely plain in nature. That is what we know as continental glacier. Rise from the continental glacial sheets in the Antarctic, Arctic region, Greenland area to the Himalayan region where you have these Piedmont glacier at the foot of many high hills. So this is what we know as the planar or the continental glacier. Then what we have is the typical mountain and valley glacier. So remember mountain and valley system and then when you have a glacier right from here to flowing in the valley which are called glaciated valleys this is what we observe as mountain and valley glacier. So the linear flows down the slopes of mountains in broad trough like valleys. So this is what happens it keeps flowing in these trough so there is a glacial movement. So these are the major two types of glaciers that we define on our surface. Now let's look into the landforms. 
So characteristics of glacial movement are important here. A glacier in its valley is slow, unlike water flow. Remember, in fluvial process, it was fast. But glacial movement is not fast. It is very slow. So the movement could be few centimeters to a few meters in a day. And glaciers move basically because of this force of gravity. Remember, then what we have observed, there is a slope. So then you have this gravity influence. So remember, there is also friction that is normal what you see. And this is what you observe as shear. So all these things we have discussed in the previous denudational processes. So that is what is important here. Now, erosion by glaciers is tremendous because of friction caused by sheer weight of the ice because it has this mass so this weight this force that is exerted now this has an interaction with this surface so glacier has this tendency of eroding that surface very easily now this is important here the material plucked the process that we have already learned is the plucking process so from the land of glaciers usually large size angular blocks and fragments are taken away so now remember when this is a plain surface and if a glacier moves on this surface what happens it tends to pluck these out so this surface now earlier it was different now it looks different so what how does it look it looks like something like this because these material have been now plucked off the surface and they have different shapes they have angular shape they are not round boulders as in the case of the river valley that is what we observed in the fluvial process so what is the difference here in a glacial movement angular blocks angular uh, fragments of these rock boulders are there but in a fluvial process you see smoothening of the surface round boulders are there so if you go to a river valley you will observe there are round boulders but if you go to a glaciated area you will find the angular pieces of or fragment of rocks there so that is important evidence as well so what we remember is this process of abrasion and plucking these are the two important processes that shape up this erosional features and further glacier also deposits this material that it carries along so let's learn about it so already in the process geomorphology part when we studied about denudational processes we learned about this in this diagram of this quarry this cross section what we see this wall with glacier which we say as the cirque as well right so what you observe here this is the portion where it is formed the freeze thaw situation right the deposition is happening here and then glacier is gradually you know made then what happens there is this particular two zones one is called zone of plucking so in the earlier part when it starts eroding the first action that starts is not abrasion the first action that starts is plucking happening because now the material is being taken out and when in the later stage this glacier has this material which is there in this then with the same material it attacks the further surface so what happens further more erosion is there so this is what is zone of abrasion so further what we see is first the zone of plucking and then zone of abrasion and then further this material is taken out and this is where there is this nose or what you say as the nose of glacier that is snout of the glacier from where this starts melting and going into the outwash that is the outwash plain. So remember these important features of this glacial erosion. So we have plucking, abrasion, and remember it leaves scratches on the surface. It doesn't smoothen the surface, rather it scratches the surface. So these scratches are known as glacial striations. Now coming to the features, erosional landforms are important first. So let's understand the erosional landforms. Now look into this image. What do you observe? Cirque and tarn. So what are these? Now, this is what you see is this cirque structure. So what you can observe here is almost like a chair, right? So if this is a chair, this is the seat of the chair. So can you observe in three dimensional if you can? Then see that this is just the seat of the chair. So it is like a chair structure that we say. And this kind of chair structure in which this is the backrest, this is the seat and this is the footrest. This kind of structure is known as cirque. So what happens? This entire area where there is snow accumulation gradually comes down with depression because of this weight of this glacier, right? And then it goes down. So this erodes the surface and further it flows out. And then when it flows out, at the bottom what you see is this lake formation which is called glacial lake. From this cirque, the melting water accumulates here in this depression. So this is what we know as tarn. So tarn is this particular glacial lake. So you can observe clearly, I hope, in this image. So 
this is what you see is this glacier which is in the cirque and cirque is this chair structure step structure if you can say and then at the bottom there is this tarn formation so cirque and tarn are the primary features that you see in the erosion landforms by the glacier then another feature that you see is u-shaped valley remember fluvial process had v-shape but glacial process does not have v-shape so what is the shape here it is completely u-shaped so the glacial erosion does not just go incision but it also erodes the sides so that is why with incision with vertical cutting it also has this lateral cutting and then gradually it forms a u-shaped valley which you can see in this image as well for example what we have observed here in the previous section that we have learnt about glacial lakes and also the tarn the cirque one of the important examples in india one of the highest sikh shrines in india is Hemkun Sahib, one of the gurus of Sikh. So, Hemkun Sahib Lake is one of the highest glacial lake or Tarn Lake that we have read. So, Tarn is a live example if you see. So, this is the old cirque that you see, right? So, all these features, this wall and then you have seen this. So, this is one of the glacial lakes which is part of the cirque lake or Tarn that we say. So, cirque lake is what we know as Tarn. So, this is Hemkun Sahib temple and you see here this is the important place of worship for many people so hemkun sahib lake is one of the important glacial or you can say tarn lakes or glacial lakes that is important here now smaller features that you see not smaller in terms of the scale if you compare with human beings but just look at these important features what you see there is something called col c o l what is this called this is this ridge line and there is a gap so when there is a gap means there is a discontinuity of the ridge it means there is an erosion in between right so this ridge has been eroded here this erosion is called coal many times this coal is also marked on the topo sheet where mountain passes have been there so coal is the first smaller feature which can gradually broaden or many times through this coal people go trekking or mountaineering and many times even roads have been built through this coals in different parts of Himalayan region and many other mountains in the world. So this is one feature where there is a discontinuity in the ridge line. Then what we see is the horn. So you know this horn on the rhinoceros. So what is there? This is what we say is horn. So this is almost like a pyramid structure, right? This is not in 3D so you cannot observe clearly but this is something like pyramidal structure. On sides they have cirque so these are eroded features and only the most important crest part is remaining as this kind of feature so it looks like a horn then what we have is a reed what is this a reed remember this is the ridge line and this is the spur line so spur line is also now like this zigzag structure like this has been eroded this is remaining so this kind of structure is called a reed so that is what we remember then truncated spur now remember these are the spur lines as you saw and gradually they are eroded right so what happens Due to this glacial erosion, this elongation in the spur line, these are like elephant's trunk. So that is what we remember as truncated spur. Then something is hanging a valley. So what is this hanging valley? This is the main glaciated valley where glacier flows, right? And then there are tributaries of it from the other levels. So from the higher level, it now throws down all the glacier part, the melted water into this main valley. So these are tributary valleys which are on the upper level. That's why they are hanging. So that is what the hanging valley is there, the concept of hanging valley. So that is important. Many times now this glacial retreats and this is also now devoid of glacier but these valleys are there. So many times the ancient glaciation can be observed through these hanging valleys as well. Apart from this, another important erosional feature by the glacier is these glacial trough. So can you observe this? These are this valley, entire valley that you see here, right entire valley where you see this water and this entire cruise running through this valley. This is known as fjords, F-J-O-R-D-S, F-I-O-R-D-S many times. So this J is pronounced as Y. So in Norway and Scandinavian area, what has happened? The earlier glaciation had left these depressions. And what happened? Sea level rose and sea water entered these glacial trough. So they form these high latitude areas where you can see this inland drainage developed in this glaciated valley. So these valleys were not formed by the river or seawater. They were formed by the earlier glacial action. They are glacial trough. But now that has been occupied by the seawater. 
So that is very interesting. So the process is glacial and basically what the glacial entrench and also the glacial subsidence which has made this trough. So remember the name fjords and they have been used for recreational purpose as well, for trading purpose as well. So these are important features that you observed in the glacial trough called the fjords. So now when we have learned already the erosional landforms, now let's look at what happens to those material that glacier carries. How does it deposit? So glacial deposits are of two major types. What are the types? First one is glacial till. So remember this word glacial till in continental drift theory. The till deposits remember we have already learned about it. So these are unassorted coarse and fine debris material that is the broken fragments. Then they are unassorted in nature. So they are not of the same kind. So some bigger boulders, some smaller boulders, so unsorted, right? Then outwash plane, that is important. So where this outwash material is deposited after the snout position was there of the glacier. So these have assorted roughly stratified deposits. So now what happens in the outwash? There is first the coarser boulder, then you have finer boulder, then you have more finer boulder. So this is what this the sorting happening. This happens in the gradual flow when glacier is melting now at the snout position and further the material is now being deposited here. So that is important to understand glacial till. So till is not sorted. It is different kinds of material of different shapes, shy, different shapes and size. But outwash, remember, it has a sorted material. So that is the difference. So now let's talk about this important feature which is called moraines. And what do you observe? Moraines are the material, these important fragment of rocks which are now carried by the glacial erosion. So what are they? They are called moraines and they are deposited in three kinds of ways. One is along. So when it is along, it is in the center. This is called medial moraine. Then at the end, if it is deposited, glacial is now melting from this part and it has now retreated back. And these are the important mounds that you see in the longitudinal course. So what you see is the end moraine. And then when we say on the sides deposition, because glacial also erodes on side as you know. So these are known as lateral moraines, which are deposited on the sides. So glacial erodes and deposits material in three ways that we have seen at the end, on the sides, in the between. So that is important here. Then further at the end segment what you observe is something called a recessional moraine. Recessional moraine is something which is because of the recession of the glacier. So glacier was until here now the glacial moved but the material that it brought was now here. So this is what is recessional. Then you have something called ground moraine. So now in between these recessional moraines and terminal moraine there are something which are not in this kind of mounds which are depressed. So these are called recessional these are called the ground moraines and then further there is a plain area at the end of this particular moranic structure that is terminal moraine that is outwash. So this outwash is almost a flat plane of this sorted deposition. So finer silts and sediments. So that is important here. Now remember there are two more features to this came and eskers. So if you observe this smaller elongated feature this is why Earlier the glacial was moving in this direction, now it has retreated back. So this material is in the longitudinal course of the river in the direction of this movement. So this smaller deposit in the direction is called came and when it is elongated along the entire valley for long length, then it is called esker. So came and esker are important features related to the glacial deposition in the valley along the direction of the glacier that is important. So now, when we have learned about the details of all those glacial landforms, the erosional and depositional features, in the sessions to come, we are going to look at aeolian landforms. So stay tuned, stay safe and keep watching.